Hey guys, so it is a Sunday, March 22nd, and this is definitely one of those days, or one of those nights, I suppose, I do not want to be a vlogger. This is one of those nights where I really want to go and just curl up in bed and not talk to you people at all. But, oh well, my job now is vlogging, and so vlogging I must do. So we are out right beside the little uh, travel trailer right now, now, not out of the swamp or anything, uh, because it is rainy pretty hard. You can probably hear the, the rain dropping on the, uh, on the little, uh, whatever that thing is, shade thing above me. You can probably hear the, the water flowing over there. It has been a cold, rainy day. Um, you know, we got down here and I was all excited because I was like, yeah, man, it's like 70, 75 degrees. This is wonderful. Well, the, the, the temperature has cooled off and so now it is like 60 degrees today and it was raining all day, the entire day it was raining. This was truly one of those days where you're like, wow, we decided to live in a camper trailer for a year. Huh. I wonder, I wonder if that was a really smart idea. But because we are here and because we don't have a lot of the creature comforts uh, just to stay around the travel trailer, we did go out and we did do adventuring. So the place we went to today was, uh, the, the big place we went to today, today was called uh, Magnolia Plantation. So if you were ever down here in, in Charles, uh, Charleston, South Carolina, go to Magnolia Plantation. It is absolutely insanely awesome. So this is a plantation that I guess uh, has been around for something like 360 years. Um, it's been growing its gardens and all that kind of stuff for something like 300 years. And it is an absolutely insanely beautiful place. Um, again, one of those places that I walked through today and truly I have never seen anything quite like it in my life. So um, I think they say they have 500 acres. It's somewhere between three to 500 acres of these gardens. And it's really cool because what they do, what, what happens is you, you start walking through and they have all these little winding paths that take you through all these different types of areas. So they have bamboo forests, uh, they have pond areas, they have lots of flowers, they have statues in the middle of nowhere. The, the trail runs along the river for a little while. And it's just this massive place that's really, really beautiful. Um, I forget exactly what, they, what type of garden they call it. It's not a normal garden. It's supposed to be a garden where the gardeners let nature take its course, but then they kind of move it a little bit. So it's really cool. So like a lot of gardens you go to uh, are usually generally small because a gardener has to go through and has to clip everything and make sure everything's trimmed proper. But one of the ways that this, this uh, garden, this plantation, uh, can be so big is because they let everything grow on its own and then they only clip what they need to or add additional things. So you walk through and it really is, it truly is just like this garden of Eden type environment where you're walking through and you're just it's it's cool it's really cool it's it's you feel like a kid again running through this place it's just really awesome and it's a type of place where they have a petting zoo there and so um I didn't realize this until my wife wandered into it. So I was taking some pictures of the uh, of the peacocks, so they have peacocks running around. And I was like, hey, this is cool. I'm taking pictures of peacocks that are only a couple of feet away from me. And then I saw that she had gone into the petting zoo. And you go into the petting zoo and you can pet the deer. So I was in there, you know, petting the deer. They have pigs that come up to you. It's just really cool. That's the kind of place it is. It's the kind of place where you walk up and deer, deer were literally sniffing my little monopod and licking it and trying to figure out if they could eat it. That's the kind of place it is. So we were there, um, and that's it. So it was raining. It was cold and rainy all day. And even being cold and rainy all day, we were there for at least three and a half hours. So when I'm saying this place is cool, if it had been a nice, bright, sunny day, we could have easily spent six hours in this place, easily spent six hours in this place, and that's not even dawdling. It was just so fabulous. It is. It was. It was literally just beyond belief. And then, uh, so they have different sections to uh, the Magnolia Plantation, and you have to pay kind of annoying they do nickel and dime you so you pay you pay like $15 for the main admission that gets you to the, the main gardens and all that then you can pay an additional $8 to go into the house so they have a plantation house 
my wife and I have basically decided we're kind of done with all those museum house tours. It doesn't really matter, so we skipped that. Uh, but then they have other tours. They have a boat tour you can go on, and they have this little train, nature train tour. But the other thing that we paid for that was well worth it is for an extra eight bucks, you can pay, and they have this Autobahn Swamp uh, Trail. And you go on to that, and that is insane. That is so otherworldly. Because when you go on the Audubon uh, Swamp Trail, it takes you on these boardwalks, and it takes you on these raised trails. Uh, you know, that, that's, again, a fairly large size. It takes a while to, to, to walk through it. Um, and uh, and all, the, uh, all the water is green. It has this weird, uh, I, forget, I forget what plant it's called, but there's this plant that grows all over the water. So when you look at the water, all the water is green. But beyond that, when you're walking around, it has its own rookery. So rookery is where uh, birds go to have their little family life. And so there's lots of different birds that are there just doing their thing. So there were uh, these big white things. That's how technical I am when it comes to birds. There are these big white birds, and there were there were 20 of them or more. They were all just hanging out and, and flying and barking at each other and all that kind of stuff. And they had other brown black birds that were like big too. I feel like such a kid. <laughs> I'm a kid. They were big birds. You don't understand. The birds were big. But it was it was so cool. So you, you, we saw that kind of thing, and they saw alligators. Uh, I'm not sure whether they're alligators or crocodile, but they're alligators and crocodile there. And overall, it was it was just so beautiful. You're just, you're walking through this place that just doesn't seem doesn't seem natural. It seems like it's something should be something truly just otherworldly. So uh, so we did that today. So we did the uh, the the uh, magnolia plantation, and I and I, I truly have to say, uh, if you come down to Charleston, South Carolina, to do magnolia plantation, give yourself a day, at least if it's nice and sunny, because it is well worth it. It really, again, three and a half hours we were walking through that place, and the only reason we stopped is we were so cold and my wife wanted to go see her friends that, that uh, are down in this area. That's the only reason we stopped. If it was nice and sunny and warm, I'm telling you, you could literally spend six hours there just very easily. It's, it's so, it's, it's mesmerizing. So after that, uh, I dropped my wife off at her friend's house so, uh, so she could play with their kids and all that. <laughs> and I wandered off to uh, the Magnolia Cemetery. Uh, so cemeteries are, are a place that you can go in a lot of areas that a lot again a lot of folks don't think about. You, there's all these things when you when you go traveling you don't think about visiting, and one of them is cemeteries. I find cemeteries can be very 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 cool places. One thing that's nice is that they're free. Two, they're large, so you can wander through and you stroll around. And then the other thing is that they have just so much history and so much character that they're very interesting to walk through uh, and see what is important uh, to, to people in different places. So whenever you walk through cemeteries, it really shows you what's important to the, lo to the local folks. So I went through this uh, Ma uh, Magnolia Cemetery, um, and they had, they had the gravestones and the mausoleum stuff you know, all the way back to the 1800s, and just wandered through there. Very, very nice, very beautiful. You can see all the different gravestones. One of the interesting things to, to look at as a northerner, northerner is how many uh, Confederate flags were still flying over the folks who died during the Confederate War. You walk through, and you look down, and you see these, these plastic Confederate flags, and you're like, huh, I don't think somebody put a plastic Confederate flag there a hundred years ago. I'm thinking somebody probably put that there very recently. So that was an interesting thing just to look at because again it, it's interesting you know coming from the north um, you know we, 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 we are always told the Confederates are the bad guys and the Union folks are the good guys and it's interesting to come down and see that these 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 bad folks you know are still remembered fondly or at least remembered well enough that, that, are, that people are putting up these little uh, you know, taking care of the grave sites and all that. So that was an interesting thing. That was a fun thing. That's up in uh, North Charleston. I'll put a little link down below the video if you want to take a look at that. And so, and so, really, that's about it for Charleston. So we've only been here really two and a half days. We're gonna leave tomorrow morning. Uh, the reason is, is because this rain, this cold rain, is supposed to keep up uh, for the next couple of days. And so. 
When we came down here, we only booked three nights at this particular RV park. Uh, and the plan was, if things were interesting, that we'd, keep, we'd, we'd stay here another few nights. Uh, but with it being cold, with it being rainy, our thought is we'll just keep heading down south. Uh, so our next stop will be Jacksonville, uh, Florida. So uh, we'll just keep heading down south and uh it's a lot warmer down there so it's down to it's it's it'll be between 70 to 80 degrees there it'll be sunny it'll be nice so it should be a lot better so that is a good thing uh, that will be a nice thing we got a flamingo rv park i don't know we're gonna go we'll see what the flamingo rv park is like we are learning though we are learning for any rv park that we want to go to that looks like it's a nice class a rv park uh that we really need to book at further out. Uh, so when we first started this whole thing, it was so easy to get uh, reservations at these RV parks. I really didn't think very much about it. Uh, but now as we're getting farther south, we're finding it is harder and harder and harder to get reservations at nice RV parks. What we find is you can always find a space at an RV park close to the area you want to go. The difference is, is it an RV park within a park that has like 400 acres of bike trails and hiking and it's just absolutely awesome? Or is it an RV park 20 miles outside the city with some highway that goes right out front type of deal? So, uh, so uh, my wife and I have decided once we get down to this RV park, what we're going to start doing is we're going to start planning out like two to three weeks in advance because that seems to be what you need in order to get the RV park you want is that you really need to book out at least two weeks in advance. So neither of us like to do that. We, we like we, we like just going spur of the moment, but we also like nice RV parks. So, you know, I guess we are going to have to start doing some planning. It won't be as bad. Um, as we initially thought though, because we think we're gonna stay at RV parks longer than we initially thought. So originally the idea was we hop into an RV park, we stay for a day, then we hop out. So two nights, basically we, we stay for two nights. If it's interesting, we stay for more. Uh, then we realized what a pain in the butt it is to load up an RV uh, or to load up the travel trailer and get it going. Uh, so then we decided three nights and now we're thinking like four or five night minimum. So with this Flamingo RV park, we're doing a four night minimum. And I'm thinking at the end of the day, I'm thinking at the end, uh, within the next week or so, we're probably gonna start doing like six night minimums or such. Because it's such a pain in the butt to pack everything up and to go. And the reality is, is if you travel about two to 300 miles from any one location, there's a lot of new interesting things to see. So we're gonna go from here down to Jacksonville and uh, in Jacksonville, we can go. We can go play at the ocean. We can go play. At, there's a couple of national parks. We can go play at Okefenokee Swamp. So there's all these things within at least an, about an hour driving distance. So we can come down, go to all these things, and then get in the car, drive you know four hours to the next place, go see all the stuff there, drive four hours. And da, 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 da. So we're thinking. We're thinking that's probably how it's gonna go. So when we're, when we're talking about uh, planning two or three weeks out before originally how we were going to do that that would mean I don't know six or seven stops which would be very difficult uh, now with how we're planning to do this it's only you know two three maybe four stops which isn't that bad in bed very hard thing to do so we know we can go okay we're gonna go from here to Jacksonville from Jacksonville there's this one park I forget the name of it from that park we're gonna go to this other park on the Gulf Coast and from there maybe over to Pensacola so it's 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 pretty easy to plan out for four different stops into the future so that's how we will probably be doing it but uh but yeah so we are uh, we are now officially closing out our first week on the road so Monday last week, Monday at like noon, Monday at noon, we officially drove out of our driveway. So, so this time last week, we were curling up with, uh, with our bedtime tea in front of the television, um, wondering what it was going to be like to not have television anymore. I have to say, in all honesty, in all honesty, uh, not having television hasn't bothered us at all this week. Uh, which was which is a surprise to be honest with you. Uh, I really thought not having TV to cuddle up with at the end of the day um, would be a very hard thing to get used to. 
I knew we could get I knew we could get used to it. I knew after we got used to it it would be okay. But I thought there would be a transition process. But there really hasn't been any transition process uh, from that first night. We haven't had TV, uh, and we're not watching iTunes or Hulu or any of that. We're not. We're not some kind. Of, you know, we're not doing that kind of thing. Um, but it's it's really pretty easy. You know, you go out, you do your stuff during the day, you make dinner at night, you clean up after dinner. I do this vlog. It's just one thing heads into another. You go take a shower. End up curling, end up uh, curling up in bed at about nine o'clock. Read my Kindle, read the book until about ten. Put out the lights, and that's about it. Um, so I do have to say, if you're thinking about going traveling and giving up TV, it's really not that hard. I really don't feel like there's a loss. I know a lot of people when I say giving up TV, there's, it feels like it's some kind of punishment. You know, you will give up TV. And all I'm saying is being out here, it's its not a punishment. I really haven't noticed a difference. Out of all the things I've thought about buying for this stupid little travel trailer, uh, a TV for it really hasn't been won during this week. So as we've been out here this week, um, things have been going better. Things have been going better. The, the biggest problem the first week uh, in, in a travel trailer is just getting things organized. So you bring all this stuff with you and you have all this idea, all these ideas about what you need and what you don't need and where you should pack things. Um, and you find out how stupid all those ideas were about two days into the trip. So we went out uh, a couple of days ago to a Walmart, <laughs> to a Walmart, uh, and we bought these little shelf unit things for one of our big cabinets. So we had this big cabinet. Um, and there wasn't really any good way to use it because it was pretty tall. It was like three feet tall, two and a half feet deep by two and a half feet wide, but it was just this big, this big open thing. Uh, so it was very, was, wasn't very useful. So we went out and got these shelves. So now we have three levels of shelves in there, and so we were able to organize our food better. So simply spending, simply spending like 15 bucks in Walmart for those stupid little shelves has made our life a lot better in the travel trailer because now we can organize all of these things. Uh, so that that's good. Uh, beyond that, yeah, beyond that. No, just trucking along. Last night was the first night that I had any any trouble sleeping, uh, which was kind of weird. So uh, again, one of the things I, I thought I was going to have a problem with is, is sleeping during the night, just since of the new environment. But really, sleeping hasn't been a bad deal, uh, except for last night. I think I ate something weird last night. I was having all kinds of gas and indigestion problems, so, uh, uh, so I woke up at like 1 o'clock. What was kind of cool... And here's a kind of cool thing when you don't have TV. So what I'm used to is, so sometimes I get insomnia, just being me. And uh, normally when I get insomnia, I get out of bed and I go watch TV. And I kind of like drowse in front of the TV. And again, that's not a bad thing. No, no moral or ethical thing there. But, you know, it's, uh, it is what it is. What was kind of cool last night is that at about 3 or 4 o'clock in the morning, I just got irritated, uh, not going to sleep. And so I got up. And I spent 45 minutes just taking a stroll around the RV park. And it's really curious, not having a TV, you do things. Like you take strolls at 3 o'clock in the morning, and you see what things look like at 3 o'clock in the morning. And I can't tell you the last time I have walked anywhere at 3 o'clock in the morning. And the world just looks so much different. And it's really kind of cool. And that's the nice part with not having a TV. Is because for me, I don't, I don't watch really hard-hitting television. You know how people talk about high-quality TV. Um, I don't know. You know, it's like uh, Breaking Bad or uh, or any of these other like these really serious TV shows. I never watch these really serious TV shows. I don't understand the point. I figure life should be pretty serious, and when I watch TV, it should be bubblegum stuff. And so whenever I watch TV, it's it's all it's, it's generally bubblegum stuff. Uh, you know, Castle, watching Castle, or watching Doctor Who, things along those lines. Um, that's not it doesn't really do anything for the brain. It just is. You just sit there, you bet you out in front of it. But what's cool with not having TV is when you get a little bored, you go out and you take a walk. And you think about the modern world, and you think about the fact that most of us don't get enough exercise in life. Is that when you don't have the TV, so you don't have anything better to do, you get up. And you just take a stroll. And so I took 45 minutes, and I walked like a mile or something last night. And it was nice, because I was out, I was getting fresh air, I was seeing what the world looked like at 3 o'clock in the morning. And overall, that was probably much better for me than sitting there and watching some boob tube, which I would have normally done. 
Again, I'm not being moral here. If I had had a TV, I would have watched TV. I would not have walked around. But because I didn't have a TV, I walked around. So, uh, so yeah, yeah, that's, uh, I guess that's most of the thoughts here for, um, that's most of the thoughts here closing out this first full week uh, of being on the road. Overall, I have to say I'm very happy with it. Honestly, being in this little shoebox, truly this is a shoebox, um, I don't miss our house. Really, like seriously, there, there's almost nothing I miss about our house, being in this little shoebox. I do envision in the future getting a little bit bigger shoebox, maybe a boot box, um, but, but I don't really miss the house. It's curious. Again, I was thinking that there was going to be a transition period, getting used to a lot of things. And there's really, it's really not too bad, to be honest with you. It's really, it is surprising. You know, when they say you don't need all that stuff, let me just say, let me, let, let me just say as, as, as an honest, as an honest broker here, uh, maybe we don't need all that stuff. Because I have all that stuff in my house. And now I am sitting, we are living in a travel trailer that I am not even joking. I am not even joking. Our travel trailer has about the same square footage as our master bathroom. Not bedroom, bathroom. And I'm happier for it. I do think I have to say, I do think I have to say we are happier for it. So, one of those things to ponder out here on the road. Uh, more rain. You see all that water pouring down? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, 60 degrees feels a lot different depending on whether it's nice and bright and sunny or whether it's cloudy and just pouring rain all day. But, you know, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? Curl up with a book. Anyways, that's all I've got to say for today. But definitely, if you guys are down here in Charleston, South Carolina, take a look at Magnolia Plantation. Magnolia Plantation is mine. Uh, I think it cost us 14 bucks to get in, the basic admission. It is worth every dime of that basic. It, it, it is truly, 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 truly. Been to a lot of places in this world, and that that is truly a world-class place to go. So if you come here to Charleston, South Carolina, do not miss uh, Magnolia Plantation.